Well, in the spirit of the women who have taken to the streets and decided not to make noise on Twitter and all those in Sudan that took a risk, we are here to appreciate you. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah. Twende Kazi. Yes. Yeah, so um, the clips that you have just seen in the heart of the conversation is how to heal our voices as women when it comes to leadership and governance. And you're here in studio to let us know some of the solutions and some of the steps that you guys believe as young people that we can take to make sure that we get heard. The gender bill recently went back to parliament, but do we even really need this bill anyway? So let's talk. Let me hear from you, Ruben. Um, there are so many... <laughs> Mm. Um, reasons why women are not stepping up in the leadership sector mm -hmm. and uh, if we talk about like uh, here in Kenya and also in Africa as a continent mm -hmm. you find that uh, there are so many various reasons as mm -hmm. to why women are still um, are not stepping up. In so what are those positions. reasons? Yes um, one reason uh, uh -huh. we can talk about is the societal norms mm -hmm. or uh, the cultural practices that we have always had in our societies. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, women have always been confined to the kitchen mm -hmm. and they have always uh, been taught that uh, they cannot be leaders or rather they cannot be elected into leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Another reason uh, you find that uh, most of the time uh, we are not uh, advocating for them to stand up. We are mm -hmm. not training them on how or rather giving them uh, capacity building on mm -hmm. how now they can step up and uh, train them have leadership traits and mm -hmm. attributes because mm -hmm. uh, many people believe that uh, leaders are born yes leaders are born mm -hmm. but effective and impactful leaders are trained mm -hmm. so we have to train them and uh, give them the leadership traits and attributes for them now to be able to step up against the men in the society Christy, you look like you strongly disagree. It's like we left you somewhere, yet you are the peace builder. Um, I would want to agree and disagree with some of the statements that he has made. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like we don't have a representation of women in government. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a lot of women working behind the scenes mm -hmm. to champion the men. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we don't want to, to be against the men. It's mm -hmm. not like we're looking to have all the men outside mm -hmm. and us taking up the position. We're mm -hmm. looking at how we can then work together mm -hmm. to form all these um, issues that we want to address. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily having a woman in front mm -hmm. to then lead all the women. No, mm -hmm. in fact, we're asking for, <clears throat> excuse me, a man mm -hmm. who can be able to also champion mm -hmm. women issues. Mm -hmm. Because look at it, who gave back to this man? <laughs> the woman, men are known to be close to their mothers. Mm -hmm. So we can't work against them. Mm -hmm. We have to work with them. Mm -hmm. So what we are asking for is the goodwill mm -hmm. to have more women voices represented in decision making mm -hmm. tables. Okay. Yes. So guys, do you think the societal norms is the reason why Kenyan women are not stepping up to the platter? Oh, well, I think... Oh, the microphone, the microphone. Um, I think to some level, mm -hmm. the societal norms play a part mm -hmm. because from the time from the time someone is born, this socialization of uh, leadership is for the men, mm -hmm. and you find that many women don't even stand up for these positions mm -hmm. for many other reasons. Maybe for finances, mm -hmm. maybe they cannot afford to stand. Mm -hmm. But even when they stand, are they really supported when they get into these leadership positions? Is it because people have been socialized that leadership is for the men? Mm -hmm. But then I agree with her. It's not mm -hmm. about fighting the men. It's about coming together to ensure that women voices are heard. You know, a woman leader focuses on a cause. A woman leader is passionate on what she does. Mm -hmm. It's about finding out how we can work together mm -hmm. and not really bashing and fighting the men. Mm -hmm. But All also, right. we want representation as women. We want women to see women in leadership. We want women to be able to stand and people vote. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really happy because just recently, as you're talking about training, mm -hmm. there was a launch on, on the curriculum to train women to mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm. stand. Mm -hmm. Also, an affirmative fund mm -hmm. to be able to fund women to come up. Because these are some of the reasons that are hindering them to be able to be at these decision-making tables. OK, great. So let's hear from one of the gentlemen who are here to to champion us today. Kaberia, would you like to say something? <coughs> there. 
-hmm. Well, uh, thank you so much. I think I, I agree and disagree also to mm -hmm. some extent because mm -hmm. I believe for women to take up the position also, mm -hmm. we really need some more things like the policy announcement and even some legislations which are really favoring the women to take up the positions. Mm -hmm. So that's why even when you look at the gender bill which was there, which was, it has been having some a lot of issues. Yes. We have seen some deliberate sabotage by either the male or the female colleagues. Yes. So that at least we can... Uh, to maybe to hinder the women from taking that. So I believe as much as there are societal and uh, other things, mm -hmm. we also need some legislation and policy framework mm -hmm. which will be able now at least to guide the process mm -hmm. and even to be able to, to spell out and to empower uh, the, the other women. Mm. Okay, someone, someone else has something to say. Great. Uh -huh. um, first of all, I would say uh, women really want to come out. <coughs> but the society norms, there is this society norm that as the lady builds up her career, it reaches a point. She has to choose between success and the family expectations. Mm -hmm. You have to be at the children, and that's the time when your career is at the top. And also, there's this thing that is called the tiara syndrome. The this, what syndrome? The tiara. Oh. Uh -huh. This is where women just want to do, just to be somewhere and do something and wait for people to recognize and acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. You see, we may, we may give women these policies, we may give women chances, we may give them the affirmative action, but if we ourselves do not want to come out fiercely, as Christine put it, many women are working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. promoting the men, building the men, uplifting the men, but they don't want themselves to come. There was this statistic, I can't remember exactly, it said that women, when we're in high school and uh, campuses, we compete equally with the men. Mm -hmm. But when we come out there, we are waiting for someone to recognize us and give us that opportunity. Uh, it also said that um, when ladies don't want to take up new skills and opportunities, you'll find a lady, if I give you right now an opportunity, you'll, ask, you'll say, I don't have the skills. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't know how will I accommodate. I really don't think I'm capable for the job. Haven't we been challenged by, by Sudan, the women in Sudan? They also have some very challenging societal norms, but they've proved that this is just a story, that it can be done. Mm -hmm. But how far is far? Mm -hmm. We are saying we are putting up progress, but how far is far? Mm -hmm. You know, we might be scaling at 0.2%, 0, 0. Mm -hmm. but I would say these um, expectations come deep down. When you ask for an opportunity, you clearly, when we came in, you asked us, who will sit there in front? Mm -hmm. The ladies. Mm -hmm. how, many were, how many wanted to come out? We were like, at first, um, I'm not sure. I'm By the way, even there. just a few minutes ago, Yanni. And we are all here <laughs> as gender activists. Yes. You see? It and there's even an expert. Down. It goes yeah. deep down. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I think we, we as, as Kenyans in this case, we do not necessarily live up to all our, the, the opportunities that we've been given. Mm -hmm. For instance, look at the power of public participation. Mm -hmm. and, and that honestly is what has led Sudan mm -hmm. and, and the whole revolution that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. That revolution was mobilized on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But us guys, we want to bash Nigerians when they want to come and talk about Kenyan women or Kenyan food or Kenyan issues. Mm -hmm. Why don't we then mobilize ourselves better to make sure that we have systematic regime changes on issues that we, we, we really care about? Mm -hmm. You know, how many of us even here are willing to take up the challenge and start groups that are going to specifically um, identify some issues within society mm -hmm. that are not necessarily the norm, the day-to-day -day livelihoods. Because, I mean, Alas is an, a, an engineer and an architect for that matter. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, these are fields that are considered main, uh, male dominant, mm -hmm. but she took it upon herself to form a social movement. So what does that tell us as, as women? Mm -hmm. We have it within us, mm -hmm. but we have to step it up. Mm -hmm. You know, fine, our society will tell us, no, you have to let the man shine, but you have been working with behind the scenes. We do all the, all the hard stuff, the only implement. So now, fine, we have all the policies framework which are gathering dust in the shelves, honestly. How then do we form mechanisms that are going to address all these issues? Speak of social injustices. Mm -hmm. Now we are talking about femicides. 
I mean, I'm so we glad have, you brought that we up. We have a fact. lot of women in Kenya now, 37 or is it 38? Yes, they are 37. Just last night, yeah. we have a woman who is now in hospital because of relationship issues. And, and this, this is has something students. that has been growing since probably when we were, we were children. Mm -hmm. Because then our mothers are now trying so hard to be entrepreneurial and have a standard in life that we do not necessarily have. But then these are societal turmoils that we are, we are now challenging. Mm -hmm. Where is the man in this picture? Mm -hmm. uh, why are these women trying so hard? And now when it comes to a woman now seeking solace in relationships, then the man comes to abuse that. What does that tell us as a society? What does that speak of us as a transitioning society? Christine, stop right there. We have a vice chair lady from my university. And these deaths that we are seeing are happening to students. Can you say something about your female students? And also, I would also like to hear a statement from the women uh, welfare. What's what? Yes, I'd like to hear something from them as well. Yes, so please go ahead. Okay, first of all, what I'd like to say is that nothing justifies murder mm -hmm. at all. Uh, we may try and justify, we may try and come up with reasons as to why some of these femicides are happening, mm -hmm. but we have to really understand that life is sacred. And whoever gives life is the only one who has the power to take it away. Mm -hmm. So let's first look at the underlying issues before we start covering up, as we've always done as a society, and you know, coming up with and, and coming up with reasons as to why this and this is happening. Mm -hmm. First of all, our moral uh, fabric of the society has been degraded mm -hmm. for both men and women. We've come to a society that murder is something that's normal, mm -hmm. something that used to be so abnormal a few years back. So let us ask ourselves, what's happening to the younger generation? Relationships have been there since time immemorial. Mm. Ever since life, uh, you know, the world was created, mm. relationships have been in existence. But why is it that our young people cannot handle relationship issues? Mm. Why is it that now, if I get into an argument with my boyfriend, the first thing I'm, the first thing I'm thinking is taking a knife and stabbing him. What's the issues that the younger generation is facing that the other generations have not been have been able to overcome? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think is really uh, is really is really affecting us as young people is upbringing. We've upbringing. Been, yes. That's where that's where everything went left. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we've been brought up in a society mm -hmm. where we've not had emotional support systems. For most of us, you know, parents are busy, okay. your, your s relatives are busy, your friends are busy, and nobody really asks you, how are you? How are you doing? And nobody is really, you know, really there for you emotionally. So you find out that if you find that one person who is really ready to listen to you, mm. you give them your all. Meaning that if this one person just decides to leave you, then it becomes a matter of do or die situation. Mm. Also, uh, when it comes to men, Men are being raised in a society with a lot of pressure. Wait, let's not talk for the men. They're here. Let them speak for themselves. <laughs> okay, so for women, mm -hmm. I believe it's time that we, we spoke up for ourselves. Yes. We stand up as mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. and we stop justifying issues because we are our greatest enemies. Mm. You find out that uh, if I want to rise up, most of the women are the people who are bringing me down. So what, how, mm. as women, are we supporting our fellow women to be emotionally stable, mm -hmm. to be financially stable, so they don't really have to rely on men? Mm -hmm. And so when things go south, mm -hmm. people are saying, you know, she was being sponsored, she was being, <coughs> you know. Victim so blaming and Victim shaming. Blame, mm -hmm. blaming, mm -hmm. and most of it is coming down to finances. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing as women to empower our fellow young women economically and emotionally so that when they come up and they go to campus they're able to handle issues they're able to look for their own money so that we don't really have to victimize them when things go south uh, first of all uh, much condolences to the family of Ivy. Yes. Uh, we are in prayers. Mm. Uh, about the issue of femicide, mm -hmm. actually, uh, number one, it's about parental care. Mm -hmm. Like when we reach the age of 18, our parents stop being our parents. Oh. Uh, now, uh, like for example, in universities, mm -hmm. for example, for example, in uh, our universities, there are no counseling offices. There's no one you can talk to. There's no one we can approach to help us tackle our problems. Society 
uh, there's also this uh, judgmental society, you mm -hmm. know. When you go and uh, talk to society, or let me say you go to and talk to someone about your problems, they judge you. They don't offer solutions, mm -hmm. but they attack you, they mock you. Mm -hmm. Now I think, for example, the issue of femicide, as youths, we should also learn to take rejections positively. When someone rejects you, that's not the end of it. There's mm. still life after that. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. Great, great, great. Can we, can we, we get, we got, you guys, we have 12 <laughs> yes. minutes, 12 minutes, so we gotta yes. make it real so, quick. So, I think mm -hmm. uh, for femicide, what I'll advise to the, the advice I'll give to the ladies, mm -hmm. if you see the red light kindly, just move out of that relationship. You know, in all abusive relationships, it doesn't start with murder. It's always an abuse. After abuse, it escalates then. After that, it's murder, before we realize it. Uh, then also in uh, there's the media also, like for example in Twitter, we talk about it for one and two, three days. Then after that, it's over. Yeah. Like Ivy's issue, like for some of us, it's a bygone case. Also there's this student who was stabbed. Yeah, a student Pwani. from Pwani, yes. Mm -hmm. That should have been a lesson. Ivy should have been a lesson to us. We should have come out. We shouldn't just be keyboard warriors, just typing mm. and taking no action. Mm -hmm. The government should step in policies should be implemented that will, uh, that will, for example, uh, look at how we can handle this issue of femicide. All right, all right. Please, can we hear? F okay, can we can we have your sentiments real quick? Then we can hear from uh, a gentleman. For me, uh, I would talk about um, leadership. Yes. Uh, not forgetting the femicide, but it's just that I think for women, mm -hmm. uh, we could sum it up as confidence. Mm -hmm. We need to be confident enough to stand up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to build a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to, you know, uh, just have a gathering of people who can support you. And then the other thing I would say is that be able to step up and even take credit for anything good that you say. Wow. Do not let the guy, you know, if you have done some work and then they take credit and say, this is, a, uh, this is my work, no. So just take say, credit for your own yeah, work. Yeah, take credit oh. for th something that you've done. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is what I would say. I like that. Can we hear, uh, can we hear from a gentleman, please? Oh, yes, uh -huh. uh, I want to mention two things. And before I mention, let me conquer with the speaker who stated that nothing justifies murder. Yes. So I want to talk about regeneration and had to hardship. When you are rejected, you are subjected to a hardship that is sometimes unsustainable. <laughs> but uh, Unsustainable? Some, really? Sometimes mm -hmm. it depends, it's individual. <laughs> so sometimes maybe unsustainable. Mm -hmm. But what do we do? We shouldn't, we should, we should as, as youths or uh, in our generation, we should learn ways to be able to accommodate stress and overcome stress. So we are having an issue of overcoming stress because yeah. I've even heard because the word unsustainable hardship. There's no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stress, mm -hmm. When you are stressed, you are in a hardship mm -hmm. that sometimes is very difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. So what uh, happens is that we need to learn how to accommodate and uh, overcome the stress. Okay. Two, let's talk of regeneration. You know, we, we understand we are in the 21st generation, but even as we are in, we, uh, we accept that mm -hmm. our past, we have had a glorious past, mm -hmm. and we also future, we also plan for, we, we also foresee a better future. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, through whatever we experience, we therefore <coughs> need to understand the concept of our generation. This is a generation that is expected to be the most superb and even the reasonings and even in every activity that happens. So that's why I say that we need the regeneration for this generation. We need to regenerate this generation. Yes. Please, can we have now the microphone? Come forward, Come forward to, this, to this gentleman here at the front. Yes, please say something, sir. You look like you are really reacting emotionally somewhere. So I'd uh, like some, to hear. Something wants to come out. Something wants to come yeah. out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's, let's hear it. First and foremost, I would want to say, uh, in terms of leadership, let me talk about, I think we've talked about leadership and mm -hmm. relationship a little bit. Yes. And uh, for leadership, I think women should, should stop talking. Mm -hmm. let's, let's do this. You do it. You don't just okay. talk on Twitter. You just don't do things on Facebook. and. Uh, and talk about policies and all these things. Do you know, I feel like I just want to clap for you again. <laughs> Should we just clap for that? We'll stop talking, you the know? The difference between the women in leadership right now 
and the women who are out there talking about this mm -hmm. to gender to, to that gender rule mm -hmm. is the action mm -hmm. and all the also these women who are in leadership mm -hmm. they should also uh, uh, cultivate a, a culture of actually mentoring these other women mm -hmm. we've seen uh, politicians having psychopaths mm -hmm. and many of those are men let's have women also uh, let's talk about psychopaths of women you know because they've been mentored mm -hmm. by a woman because mm -hmm. you know uh, for you to reach somewhere, you have to at least be, 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 be very uh, creative and know that you have to be somewhere in the future. So you have to uh, stick here around, you know, you don't just go there. You, you don't just wake up today and say, I want to be the president, you know? So you, I think you've possible. touched on role models, something yes. like role models. Yeah. Like we need to be each other's role models yes. if we want to be in leadership. And uh, if, I, if I also want, I, I want also to comment on, uh, on relationships, and I would want to say, mm -hmm. some men have been raised in uh, in a way that you ha you don't have a father or a father figure or oh. something like that. Mm. That's, that's, a, that's a very 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 key thing mm -hmm. in a man's life. Mm -hmm. You have to know how how, how relationships are being handled. Mm -hmm. Let us not let us not. If also, women can reject you as a man. Yes. And uh, you know, when a man sets his eyes on a woman and wants that woman. You will always try your best. Do whatever you can do. Ooh. Even, you know, Hallelujah, you can send money, you can do a lot of things, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the problem is, the problem will come when that woman says, you know what? I really don't feel that connection. But you just have to accept it as a man okay. and move on. There are so many other women out there who can, who can, who can actually, uh, you can treat them well and they will be appreciated. Mm. Okay, Hilda. Um, Wait, as a parting shot, because we need to wind up. I'm so sorry, you guys. We have to do part two next week, yeah? <laughs> we must continue next week. We must continue. So, uh, but we gotta, gotta cut it short for now. But anyway, Ruben, can we have your last parting shot then? Yeah, um, I would like to say that mm -hmm. um, no matter how many times we talk about why women are not stepping up, we also mm -hmm. need to look at uh, why, uh, what, what is the root cause mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. We need to go back to the uh, childhood, the upbringing they of women. Bringing Yes, how, like lady, all what right. affected them since the time that they were being mm -hmm. brought uh, by the parents mm -hmm. because you find that this is the root cause mm -hmm. of the kind of uh, challenge we have for women right now. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, a childhood where uh, the, the girl child is bought uh, a, a toy mm -hmm. that is uh, a dolly. And uh, so that, that girl child will grow up knowing that uh, their role in the society is motherhood. You have a boy being bought uh, aeroplanes and cars. They grow up knowing that uh, they are, their role in the society to get success and buy all these cars. And uh, so you find that relationship that is, is the secondary. First, yes, mm -hmm. that is the first uh, mindset that we set to these children. Mm -hmm. And the mindset is a very powerful tool, mm -hmm. and it casts both ways. Mm -hmm. If it is negative, it is going to destroy the future of these children. Mm -hmm. So you find that we need to instill a different mindset mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. during the parenting. Mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. of the children that's why we have these relationship issues mm -hmm. you find that uh, we also concentrated so much mm -hmm. with the girl child empowerment nobody is talking about the boy child empowerment but we are here with you that, people that, man what <laughs> that do is you why mean? that is why hilda today <laughs> we have uh, uh -huh. a woman who is really empowered and they are emotionally stable mm -hmm. against a man who, uh, who is insecure and they are Ooh, feeling threatened okay that's now, why now we, it are, makes sense. we are having a man who doesn't want to be told it uh, uh, no they mm -hmm. cannot take a no for an answer mm -hmm. because they feel threatened by the girl child. So we also need to look at how we can, <laughs> how we can engage the men uh -huh. in this talk of mm -hmm. empowering women mm -hmm. because they are the biggest stakeholders here. Uh -huh. Men are the biggest stakeholders. So we hey. need to also engage them as we empower the women. We need to. We should clap for that. Them. Yeah, they're like yes, yeah, yeah, thank just you. <laughs> that is why I'm here today because I believe that when we are having a talk about mm -hmm. women leadership and especially youthful <laughs> women leadership, mm -hmm. we also need to involve the men mm -hmm. in the talk. It is very important. All yeah. right. So we need to involve the men. I'm hearing a lot of how we can heal our society is first to heal the family, the family setup and our upbringing. And our parents <laughs> need to be there for us emotionally, not only yeah. uh, through, pro pro through, through provi providing for us the basics. And I can, I can hear a lot of that. But we got to cut this short, chip, guys. I'm so sorry. Can I? Um, um, okay. As a parting shot, I'm going to let the lady, because she has really insisted something wants to come out. I'm going to let you close this segment for us. Please make sure you do uh, catch up with our Panari Give 
giveaway for Easter. In case you're in case you're watching at home and you're interested in having a nice gig with your better part, uh, your better half, or even your mom or whoever, because it's Easter. You know, it could be a family time. Make sure you do catch up, slide into our social media handles, and let us know who you would like to go with your favorite Easter moment. And yes, the baby might just win some tickets. So yes, it's about time we tap out. My name is Hilda Adidi. This is Youth and Politics. Next week we are still back here. Cindy, are you guys? Yeah. All right. So now finish it for us.